Now this documentary I'm going to do from a posting by Mark Jones, you can see on the right in the Lunar Anomaly Research Society Facebook, LRAS. So it just looks like a typical um, moon picture from far away, you've got the craters. You've got these curly things on the top, which I think are a coral type of uh, growths that can reach a very high um, heights because obviously there's less uh, gravity on the uh, moon, there's a very um, constant climate and they can just uh, grow without any hurricanes or winds or storms and reach very gigantic heights. Now what I found are these craters here which don't really look like craters because there's obviously things uh, growing in them. There's an object there that looks like a huge tree coming out. There's one gigantic object there that's actually sideways. Um, now I've estimated from the scale the moon is 3,500 kilometers wide so taking out a tape measure I've just e extended the picture to estimate it's about 35 centimeters diameter so one centimeter is 100, uh, 100 kilometers now this from that side to there is 1.5 centimeters so it's 150 k's from front to back or back to front and the height's about half a centimeter which is 50 kilometers now I've analysed previously one huge platform that was 50 kilometres as well. Now that's why this is interesting because it's just gigantic. So it seems as though if this is a stationary object, it's just grown and grown and grown and grown and reached that fantastic height. We see all these other tubicle tubes that just twist and turn, which I'll zoom in on. There's a huge one there as well. Now these look like a natural uh, growth there on the moon. Obviously there's a thin atmosphere we're told, there's obviously some sort of a, a gas that permeates from the soil, uh, moisture, condensation, so you have all things there which allow our life, the photosynthesis from the, the light and things like that. So if we have all sorts of uh, life on Earth, it's not hard to uh, imagine there are specific life forms on the moon as well. Now these are not rocks, they look like they're growths. Uh, now I'll just analyse the pictures, they're great, especially that object there because one part of it seems to uh, lead into that a cavity down there and these larger objects um, there's one a tower that I've pictured here, right there, I'm zooming on and that looks like a huge tree uh, so let's now go into the pictures now which I've enlarged, here they are now I've just used a simple um, um, Windows photo uh, gallery and I've just pressed the um, clarity color resolution. Let's go to the largest object straight away. It's fantastic. It's just dark purplish a solid type of looking object. I don't think it's a mobile or it could drag itself. I don't know. It's just hard to understand what it is. So there it is. That would be about 150 kilometers front to back. Now, one process dips down and goes into that cavity there, which I'll zoom in on. Now, I've actually processed this as clear as I can. I'll try it once more. But I don't think I can get any clearer. And on the scale, I've actually gone as close as I can to um, the highlights and everything like that. So that's probably the clearest I can do for that. Um, and here it is there. It's just a it looks hard shelled. It looks um, like it's composed of these twisting cylinders, and one goes straight and bends over into that cavity there. Um, next picture. There's some more twisting ones there. There's not much to see on that one. It's a pretty hard one to analyse. Here are those holes that aren't craters. If you can see there. I'll actually jump back and forth. It's the one here near Aclavius, right there. So it looks as though the, the, the one I analysed was there, that large object. Now it looks as though there are actually some sort of a, a growths in there. That's brought up a little bit of so you just have to play around with the scale a bit to 
bring up certain things. Obviously, they're not just craters because you've got these things that fit perfectly in those um, holes or areas there. Okay, that's all we can do for that one. Next picture. Um, that's an ex extension of the other picture we had. These are these strange. Ah, that's the object in the first picture that has a process that goes down and goes into the a cavity there. So I'll just return to that scale and show you what I'm talking about. There's the object there, and there's that tube that goes down and uh, bends into that cavity right there. Okay. So I'm just trying to show you that there it is. It bends down and goes into it. Now I can't bring up any more colour or resolution. That was a very hard one to work with. It's probably the best I can do on that one. And if I enlarge it, you just see that process bend down and it leads into that cavity. I'm not sure what the cavity would provide. Some sort of nutrient or there could be large water wells under the cavity there from the condensation that are hidden from the sunlight and obviously it's a could be a source of uh, nutrients for the object here are those other twisting curly growths there next picture some more there it just shows you the twisting curly type of growths. One more there. Not much to enlarge on that one. Same ones there. They aren't structures or anything that are produced, I think, by any artificial intelligence. I think they're just type of coral growths that are obviously have a, are adapted to that sort of life form, which is a thin atmosphere, plenty of sunlight. And very uh, minimal condensation. Now, this is the object that I can't stop thinking about because it seems to be c connected by that tube there and it goes into the cavity. And it just is bizarre. It, it's horizontal, it's um, very dark purplish in colour, it looks like it's hard skinned, and it just lives there. But I don't think it can actually uh, move around a lot. It just is connected. You should see some processes there that actually probably tether it or connect it, like roots to a tree into that cavity. So that's the only way I could describe that. Here we go. Look at that. That's fantastic. 150 kilometers long by about 50 to 60 kilometers high. Fantastic. Look at it. Now the other other thing that I found similar, it's that object there. I'll actually quickly pause it and go to that object right now which I found similar. This is the similar size object that I investigated in my previous video. That's about 50 kilometers high. It's like a tower and there's a, a, gr a growth there and the tubes lead back down. So I think the uh, nutrients come from under the soil or uh, moisture and the object grows like a tree you've got probably a photosynthesis happening there and things like that so that's the type of objects these are the type of objects I've actually analyzed before like that one there's like a huge tree growing and there's those tubes down the bottom and obviously uh, that one there as well and here's a close up one of the tubes but the strange thing is this one does not go straight in it there's a tube there that goes into the hole and you've got a dark open black aperture right there so I'm not sure the hole might provide um, a gas or a vapor coming out so here's one hole here I've analyzed it looks like there's a, a vapor or some sort of cloud coming from it right there. See it there? You've got like a ventilation shaft where you've got these things coming out. It looks like clouds or a vapor trails rather than a living object. There it is there. So just quickly zoom back. 
So here's our structure again. I think I've analysed this previously. I'll just try it again if I can just get a bit more out of it. But I think I've tried the best on this one I can. Yep, that's probably the best I can do on that. Not sure what happens if I play off the shadows. Okay. If I go that way, it's not that good. Leave it there. I'll go a bit darker. Enlarge it. So it seems to be a hard, structured, very dark, purplish type object. Here are the things coming out of that hole there. They're like tubercle growths. So the hole could provide an entrance to nutrients or a moisture or things like that because all these things seem to go and are close to these holes. Actually, if we enlarge that, we see all the growths there. That's a right angle there, it's formed, so there. Now he, ah, that's a very good picture. This is the object, let's go back, that is curled down into the cavity. And it looks there, it's actually a tethered. Now if I try to bring it up a bit more by changing the shadows, we might bring up those. Yes, right there it seems to be anchored where it goes into the cavity right there. Um, there it is there. So what I'm trying to show you obviously is that object there and that cylinder or that turns down goes into the cavity and is anchored. And the cavity could provide the nutrients and uh, uh, moisture and all things it needs to survive. That's my explanation of it. And there it is there. Let's go to the next picture. There it is there. Strange thing is, if that's 150 kilometres, that would be about 20, 30 kilometres. So we've just got a tube or a cylinder that sticks out that far. Because there's less uh, uh, gravity on the moon, I assume it can actually do that without uh, bending down due to uh, gravity. It just seems to be an unusual way to uh, uh, grow sideways. <sighs> I'll see if the shadows might bring something up. Clavius, here's that object coming out, like a little rod that comes out of the hole there. Now, here's the tree. Now, this one, I, I'm trying the best I can to bring up something, but it just looks like a tree out of that hole. If I play with the shadow, I might bring something up. That's probably the best I can do. So, I think that's the part of the shadow there. That's the hole, and there's the object. I'll see if I can enlarge it. That to me looks like a tree coming out. Uh, just colour. I might be able to do something with that. It's not that easy, is it? Probably if I play with the tint, we might bring it up a bit better. Saturation. Just trying to get the structure of that, but it looks like it's a vertical structure. And there it is, it just comes up, it's got branches. That's the best I can do. I'm trying to enlarge as much as I can. It does look like a, a definite vertical structure, which shouldn't be unusual because we've got all these things are seem to be connected to holes. Now what's under the hole? There it is, that, that's a good picture. There's a little rod coming out of that one. That's even a, from further away, it's a bit a better picture. Now there's a rod there coming out of that one. Um, again, we've got like two or three round white objects in that cavity there. These are those tubicles or growths that look like corals again. Nothing special about them. There's them on the moon. Smaller ones and larger. But this again is that fantastic horizontal tube like structure. And that's a, that's where it looks as though it 
is anchored or a tethered like a root into the cavity so it's more like it's, it's actually grown like a tree here we go such shadows there we go I can see the roots right there this is a great video I like that that's probably all I can do with that one at the moment that's wonderful I think that's the last picture so that's the object we're looking at that huge object there the best picture I've got of that object would probably be um, yeah that's probably one of the best pictures of it and I'm trying to just look at the whole structure of it it looks dark purplish black so it I would absorb heat if it's black yes it isn't a bright white color so it absorbs heat the heat could be used in chemical reactions it's got like roots are tethered into there which leads into the cavity which could provide uh, moisture and things like that or it actually could feed back these nutrients back into the uh, moon itself so it could be an extension of the moon there's two ways of looking at it what's under there I don't know okay and that's all for this one so this was a very good analysis and I'll just return and show you the thing I was looking at right there the Eclavius